Welcome to Hiraith, the home of modern Welsh politics. 2022 will be another year of elections in Wales. This time, we will be going to the polls to decide how Wales's 22 local authorities will be run. Tonight, we focus on Cardiff, and most specifically, the new electoral alliance between Plaid Cymru and the Green Party in our capital city. Joining me and Kerry are the architects of this new pact, uh, Rhys Ab Owen MS. Hello, Rhys. Shall I? Hello. Right. And we've got returning once again to the pod, Anthony Slaughter, the leader of the Wales Green Party. Hello, Anthony. Hi. Good to be here. Thank you for joining us. Kerry, I think you're starting us off this week. Yes, evening both. So I, I, I'm declaring my conflict of interest here. I'm obviously a, a Green member and uh, perhaps even a candidate for, for next year's election. So I, I know a little bit about this, but what I'd like you to do is to just talk us through, you know, how did this happen? Um, Rhys, do you want to kick us off? Yes, how it happened, I was um, picking up my daughter from um, my uh, sister-in-law's house in Grangetown and a guy who's on the street uh, who's very active in local uh, politics and uh, activism throughout uh, Cardiff and he was the one who um, kind of mentioned the idea that, you know, we should be looking at kind of an alternative to, to Labour in Cardiff. He was annoyed with uh, what was going on, a lot of the developments happening, and thought that uh, the Labour administration in Cardiff wasn't listening to the people. So he was the one who planted uh, the idea that Plaid should reach out uh, to the Green Party. And I think shortly afterwards, um, Anthony may correct me if I've got the uh, chronology slightly wrong, but we, as a local party in Cardiff, uh, we re- reached out to Anthony to start the conversation. And I think that's going back to June of, of this year. And yet yeah, the uh, conversation uh, followed on from there. And I'm glad to say we've had some fantastic uh, meetings and we've worked very closely uh, together since then. Similar, really. I had some conversations with people involved in community activism in Cardiff who had an idea that this was in the pipeline and they told me they'd spoken to Reese. And then when Reese got in touch, we had a couple of initial meetings with some Cardiff community activists on board as well. And yeah, as Reese said, it has been just overwhelmingly positive and forward looking from the beginning. And I think what really clinched it for me was that it was coming from, there was this desire from community activists, grassroots campaigners to see political parties working together. And I think that is such a good starting point. I mean, this isn't really new, the Green Party and Plaid Cymru working together. I mean, we've seen this in uh, the last general election, but in that election, there was also the Liberal Democrats as part of that alliance. Is, was that ever part of your discussion in this, in this, in this set of elections or, or, or are the values and priorities of the Liberal Democrats too far away from Plaid Cymru and the Green Party? I, th- I think it is different from the um, the previous uh, pact between Plaid, the Lib Dems uh, and the Greens in that uh, a party would have to stand down for another party at a constituency. This is completely different. In For all intents and purposes, we are the same party for the local elections in Cardiff in 2022. So all of our candidates um, will be standing under the Plaid Green a slogan, so that that'll be more similar to Colonel Davis in in, in Kerry in nineteen ninety two, rather than the Unite to Remain campaign. So I think that's different. We also knew we had to move pretty quickly, and we thought there were more in common between us and the uh, Green Party in, in Cardiff. Both parties are um, in favour of um, independence. We thought we had a a lot in common, so that's why we reached out to the Green Party. Now, whether we would cooperate with the the Lib Dems after the local elections, that's a matter for the councillors elected. Uh, But that's how we came to our decision. I think it's important to stress that this has come from the bottom up rather than the top down. I mean, I was involved in Unite Remain. I was the Unite Remain candidate in Baylor Morgan. And it was a very worthwhile enterprise, very well motivated but it was something that political parties decided and then they got local party agreements. Whereas this has come from people in Cardiff wanting to see something happen. And we can't beat around the bush on this. There is so much similarity. Sometimes in the Green Party, we've spent way too much time trying to distinguish ourselves and say, we're not Plaid Cymru, but in a place like Cardiff, we're campaigning on the same issues. We've got share so many similar values. And yet people have asked the question, what about other parties? 
who interestingly enough, no other parties approached us have approached me, for instance, because I'm always open to talking to people apart from the UKIP abolish idiots, but I, I will always have a conversation with people at a local level or national level. And no one's approaches, and even more interestingly, this has now been public knowledge since last Friday. If anyone was interested in saying, well, why haven't you spoken to us? They would have done so by now. So I, I assume, now this has been a very much a conversation between two parties who share similar values, but I also assume that the Lib Dems right now aren't interested in being part of it. If I've got what's been reported correct, it's not just around parties. There's also been discussions with other progressive groups in Cardiff who are looking to agitate for change. Can you tell us a bit more about how you've engaged with those and how that's come about, Anthony? Well, we're still working out the details. As you know, we've only just announced the fact that we've signed a memorandum of understanding between the two political parties. But very much part of this and these conversations that Reese and myself had in the beginning with grassroots campaigners who are campaigning on local issues in Cardiff and want a political voice, there are some very, very good people, some very passionate people who want to stand to the council. And you know, we're doing this, one of our main motivations for doing this is to get genuine grassroots representation on Cardiff Council. So there will be some independent candidates. We're still in talks, we're still working out the details, but there will be some people that we will embrace and endorse as part of this campaign. And it's fair to say, if it wasn't for them, yeah. uh, they were the first push for us to start uh, talking. So they have been a key aspect of this uh, right from the beginning. I think that's what makes it really, really exciting for me. This isn't just two political parties, however well-meaning, doing some horse trading and you, know, you don't stand there, we don't stand there. This is a genuine coming together of people who share very, very common values. If you don't mind me asking, how would it be branded? Have you worked out that aspect of it yet? We've got common ground branding. We've got some really good graphics drawn up already. And that's, that, again, highlights what Reese has said about this is, in effect, one party. We'll be putting out leaflets that have the common ground branding, which has a common ground logo and incorporates Wales Green Party and Plaid Cymru's logo. It's very much, that's the message we want to get across to people. There's so much in the past when parties do make deals or arrangements, it's not always clear to the voters. So there's no Green Party candidate there. The voter doesn't actually automatically assume that we want them to vote for the five candidate. The clear message that both parties are putting out in this case is we want you to vote for the common ground candidate, the applied and the green candidate. And we'll be making that very, very clear in the messaging in the literature. If it's a four seat ward, these are the four common ground candidates. Please vote for all of them. You call it a grassroots up campaign to, to, to work together, but how much of the parties themselves been involved in this negotiation process? And has there have to be any sort of sign off from the central parties for this agreement to take place? Well, well from our uh, point of view, we had to have agreement from the four constituencies um, in Cardiff. So it did go out to, to, to the membership for the agreement before we uh, reached out to the National Council. And we had to have the, the final sign off uh, from them. But Plaid is a devolution party, a, a devolved party. So the power does lie within with the, the members. So it was uh, just a rubber stamp exercise uh, with regards to the National Council when it was just clear from them that over, there's an overwhelming support from the local members in Cardiff to work so closely with the uh, Green Party. It, it went through without any difficulty at all. Exactly a similar, similar situation with us. We are a grassroots democratic party. Members make decisions. Initially, when I was approached and the talks were on, I sort of referred back to Cardiff Green Party's offices just to get the go ahead and let people know these talks are going on and be okay to do that. Been in touch with our various election staff from the very beginning just so they were aware this was happening. But yes, it had to be decided on by in Cardiff. We have one party representing Cardiff and the Vale, one local party. We put a vote to our members. And again, because this is something so unique and this offer that we're standing together across Cardiff. It was almost, well, not quite, but almost unanimous the support for it from our members because we couldn't do this without our members' agreement. If we agreed this without their agreement, it wouldn't work, it wouldn't get anywhere. But I was very, very pleased by the support that was shown. In terms of the negotiations then, have you already worked out a policy platform? Is that something that will happen uh, in the next couple of months? Yeah, there must be a, a level to which you, you know you already agree on, on, on many things that has allowed you to progress to this stage, but is there a, a firm policy platform yet? We've agreed on principles that the campaign will be based around. Obviously the next step is drawing up. We have said 
we will put out a joint manifesto explaining how those principles come together and what it means for Cardiff. But yeah, that work will now start. We've got the agreements in place, the memorandum of understanding. We've come together, we've agreed that, signed it off, announced it. We have two steps forward now. It's finalising candidate selection, who's standing where, what candidates we've got, and also developing the policy platform. But we have agreed a set of principles that we'll base that on. Yeah. And I think that was very important, wasn't it, Anthony, right from the beginning, that they were main principles that we could uh, agree upon. Uh, one, of course, was the, the green agenda. And another thing was the community grassroots activism. So that's been that's been very important uh, from the uh, word go that there was agreement between us on those big issues. Yeah, we're, we're very keen to focus on sustainable development, protecting green spaces and genuine Transforming democracy, radical democracy, getting community voices heard. And obviously, goes without saying, the green agenda, which is so crucial at this time. Rhys, you mentioned uh, Canuck Davis uh, a little bit earlier and the success he had in the 90s under that joint banner. And I actually wrote in a blog about this earlier this year and um, just wondering whether things have changed since Canuck stood. You know, he obviously then went to stand and alone and applied, or whether the similarities between that early play green position can resonate now or whether there are difficulties which will really put some of this under pressure if we look to go elsewhere you know would could this be done elsewhere in wales or is it is just solely focusing on cardiff and the urban areas well i'll start with the, with the cannot point because he went from fourth in the 1987 um, general election, standing just and applied, to, to winning it in 1992 under the joint banner. To the, the, the second point about whether things are harder now for an alliance between both parties, I actually think it's easier. I think we've got far more in common now in 2021 and then in 2022 than we had in, in 1992, 30 years earlier. The green agenda is that much more obvious with Clyde. The Green Party uh, has subsequently come out in favour of, of, of Welsh independence. So I think we are much closer. And, and yes, to answer your, your, your final point, Kerry, uh, my hope is if this is successful in, in, in Cardiff, or if it even shows the potential of being successful in the future, I would like to see it being replicated in, in other areas, especially in, in city areas, Swansea, Newport, I see no reason why we can't work closely together in other areas and in other elections. I'd just like to echo that. I mean, I wasn't an active member back then, but I think on our side, the Wales Green Party is a much more mature political organisation now. Back then, I, from what I'm told, it was quite divisive internally. I think both parties are in a different place now, and I think the public have a greater appetite. One of the things that really pleased me over the weekend, the Response from not just party members was so overwhelmingly positive. At last, politicians are doing the grown-up thing. They're talking together, they're working together. So I don't think... I was surprised I haven't had to deal with any negative comments from members or the public so far. And I think the strength of it is, because both parties are operating at the local democracy level, this is a decision that Clyde Cardiff and Cardiff Green Party have made, it absolutely can be replicated across the country. There'll be different issues, there'll be different things that bring people together in different areas where they say, okay, we're working together on this, let's park that, we don't agree on that. But I think this will, it will start something, I think. That, that is definitely my feeling. One of the big hot topics, I think, in this council election next year in Cardiff, especially in the north of the city, will be the, the Northern Meadows development. And I know you've been against that development, Reese, but obviously in the, in the centre of the election, applied with four the development of the hospital on that site. What will the alliance's view be on that on that site in next year's election? Well, certainly the the plight the previous plight centres group came out. Well, certainly not. Uh, they, they stopped calling for an independent inquiry with regards to uh, Belinda being built on the Northern Meadows before uh, the last uh, election, because we have a very different centres group now. The matter will be discussed in in conference. It's going to be a virtual conference now, later on in October. Plaid Cymru in Cardiff has always been against the building on the Northern Meadows. Uh, it's always been my view that the clinician evidence is pretty clear that there should be a co-location, that Valindra should be co-located uh, with the 
Heath Hospital. The uh, idea that people would be uh, transported uh, across the city in ambulance, have to wait to ambulance and, and have the operations in the Heath Hospital before you know going back to, to Belinda makes no sense uh, at all to me. We, we're always talking in, in several different fields, not just in health, of the need to work closer together, to cooperate far more. The idea then of having um, a, a cancer centre in, in Whitchurch uh, and then the University Hospital in Heath makes no sense to me at all. Now, we have an opportunity here to have the best possible cancer centre we can, serving the whole of the uh, South southeast Wales. We must make sure that the model is right. And uh, my view is the model is not right. I also think there should be far greater protection for, for green spaces. But if I believed that the Northern Meadows was the best location for a cancer site, I would support the building of the cancer site on the Northern Meadows. But my main um, issue with the Northern Meadows going, with the Belinda being built in the Northern Meadows, is that it's not what's needed uh, for cancer treatment in Wales for, the, for now and for the future. I, well, I think what Rhys has said just echoes, gives you an indication of what the Alliance will be saying, what Common Ground Alliance will be saying on this subject. And in the negotiations and the discussions and meeting up together, it's been very, fairly clear that Rhys, myself and the others involved in discussions share the same views on this. But I think it also highlights an issue in politics and why this coming together is so important. Now, this is an issue that we stand solidly together on, but there may be issues that we don't completely 100% agree on. And I really must respect the campaigners who fought such a campaign and raised awareness of this. And they've obviously invested so much into this and they want to see politicians who support what they're calling for. But sometimes you are to disagree with someone. And if my MP has a different view from me on the Swansea Tidal Lagoon, for instance, and we disagree on that, and then they stand up and say something that chimes so wholeheartedly with what I feel about refugees, do I turn around and say, no, no, I can't talk to you because we disagree on Swansea Tidal Lagoon? I think. And that is what this is about as well, is that we agree on so much, the issues are so urgent, we need to get together and deliver on the things that we agree on. But just to just to reaffirm that you know, this alliance will be firmly on the side of everything that Reese has just said on the Northern Meadows. And that's so right, isn't it, what Anthony is saying? You know, we, we disagree inside our own parties about the matter. Look, look at the Labour conference at the moment, UK Labour conference at the moment, all the disagreements uh, ha happening there. So, you know, I, I, we can go too polarised, can't we? If we don't agree with somebody on absolutely everything, well, that's it. They can't be an ally for us. They can't be a friend uh, with us. They can't campaign with us on other big issues and I think Auntie's really you know struck, struck a, a strong note there that you know we, we need to see you know Anthony I won't agree uh, on everything actually I haven't found anything I disagree with him yet but I'm sure things will happen in the future when I do disagree with Anthony but that doesn't stop us from working on some other very important stuff like the green agenda because you know because we've, we've seen all the reports about you know Cardiff being underwater large parts of Cardiff being underwater in, in 50 years time and, and decisions being made uh, by the council that don't take cl the climate emergency serious enough. And, you know, that will be at the heart of um, our campaign and at the heart of any uh, councillors that we have uh, in the future. The, the green agenda will be very important for us. I'm sure, as you know, other parties are picking candidates, have candidates in place. What's your time frame for, for getting uh, all your candidates picked? We're looking at in announcing an initial candidate slate probably late October. That might not be all the candidates who stand because we have, the aim is to stand in every ward, but we will be doing a campaign candidate launch late October and that will be followed up. Next step will be the manifesto launch. And I'm just interested, what will the measure of success be on this alliance? Have you got a, a is it just to win seats overall? Is it to, to get people into position where they can create change? Do you, do, you, do you really need to see the vote share to go up or do you need the, the candidates to win for this to be considered a success? I've no doubt the vote share will go up. We want to get people elected to affect the change that's needed in Cardiff, but we also want to change the way the politics is done in Cardiff. So this isn't just for the sake of the election. This is building a strong relationship moving forward to how we work together in, on Cardiff Council. 
No, I, I agree with Anthony. This isn't just about winning uh, seats, and of course that sounds silly for a for a, a politician to say. But this is about you know changing the way we we, we look at things and and, and seeing that well, we can have grown up uh, policy. We can come together to tackle the big issues um, of our day, and if that can shift the mentality towards that, towards uh, some progressive alliance to tackle uh, climate emergency, to tackle the uh, what's happened with with Brexit and uh, and COVID, I think that'd be a, a very good thing. You know, for far too often we are far too tribal. We we concentrate on what um, what divides us rather than what unites us. And I, I you know I really hope this can be a, a start of something bigger, a, a shift in mentality where it shows yes we can come together to tackle some of the big things. Is is it fair to say, gents, that this is very much how you choose to do politics rather than just simply trying to combat our first past the post system. Um, absolutely. I mean, and this is how politics is done. I mean, it's a good point about first past the post because this is how politics is done in most European countries. You'd have these conversations after the election, like they're about to do in Germany now. But yes, it's very much we've got to change. All of these issues facing us are urgent. We've got to change the way we do politics. And I'm really proud to be part of this because I think this is going to be a step change and changing the way politics is done in Wales. And, you know, I, I hope we, we will win a lot of seats, <laughs> but if we manage to, to push the Labour Party in Cardiff to take some of these issues far more seriously, I'd be happy with that too. We, we really need to be pushing the Green uh, agenda now, and I think our alliance, the Green and Pride coming together, it's going to give much more focus on the Green agenda in, in next year's election. So, I mean... Obviously, in the future, the local authorities will be able to pick the electoral systems they use to elect their councillors. Do you think that if Cardiff, after this point, didn't see the need to use first past the post anymore, which, although I think it's probably a little bit unlikely, do you think that alliance of this kind would be required again in the future? Or do you think that proportional representation, STD, would allow Ply Cymru and the Green Party uh, individually enough room to, to stand? Look forward to the day when they introduce STD to council elections, <laughs> and then I'm sure people like Reese or myself, who are in positions similar then, will have these conversations, but they will be very, they'll be slightly differently slanted because it'll be a different setup. But this is the start of cooperation and collaboration. So whatever system we've got, I think that needs to carry on. I, I, I agree with, um, uh, totally with Anthony uh, there. Th this alliance isn't dependent on STV or, or greater proportional re uh, representation. This alliance exists because it it needs to exist. Reese, you, you mentioned the, um, the Labour Party just a moment ago. What has the reaction been like since uh, this was announced last week from the parties? I think media coverage, I think, has been really good. But have you? What kind of feedback have you had from elsewhere? I think it's been been slightly surprised by the silence on behalf of the other parties, on part of the other parties, but then we have announced this as Labour have gone off to their conference, so possibly we'll start getting some more feedback when they come home from that. I am sure they would be overjoyed for you to take some of their press attention away from them <laughs> uh, in the last few days, Anthony. But I just wanted to say thank you very much to both of you for joining us this evening to talk about this, and best of luck in the election. Thank you. Ciao. Now joining us is Richard. Hello, Rich. How are you doing? Hey, Matt. Thank you very much for joining us, Rich. Uh, as our resident Clyde guy, what do you make of this uh, electoral alliance? It's really interesting to watch. Uh, I, you've seen both parties have uh, quite a shared history, and it was really interesting to hear Anthony saying that there are a number of independents who were going to join in uh, in the common ground under the common ground banner but you know particularly you know thinking back not that long ago when the leader of the Wales Green Party left um, the Green Party to go straight to Plaid Cymru I mean you'd wonder if that was a, a giant leap or just a tiny little step and I think the policy platform quite clearly as a, as a central party level is very very similar but you would suspect as frankly with an awful lot of Labour activists actually the gap between them in terms of the kind of people on the ground that are campaigning on the actual substance is probably not that far apart either. So um, it's interesting. I think the question that you, I think you raised in the pod, Matt, I think the really interesting one is, what does this actually mean electorally in the local election campaign? Maybe this is one for you to have a, a stab at Kerry. Do you think that this will lead to 
are, you know, are, are the two greater than the sum of their parts when it comes to bringing in actual returned councillors? Whether whether it brings in a, a greater sum, we'll wait and see. Things are moving quite fast at a, at a political level. I think we touched on it in the interview around some of the issues that are going to come up next year. You're going to have the Northern Meadows, bus station, Castle Street, and then things which don't get um, really raised, but perhaps a fo- we've taken the limelight with the environment, but things like uh, inequality in Cardiff, social care, schools, all these kind of issues are going to come out into the into the mix over the next 10 months or whatever it might be. So I've written about this earlier in the year, you know that, and I, th- I think it is a, a major step forward. But Matt, you know, you're part of the sitting council, which is, you know, if we look at the figures for Cardiff, Cardiff is a very Labour council. Over half the seats of the 75 people elected a, a Labour Conservative of the second strongest party, and then, you know, the one-time leaders, Lib Dems, with eleven seats. So, you know, what? How do you think the Labour Party will take this kind of uh, approach, Matt? Uh, sadly, I am. I am not part of the uh, governing majority on Cardiff Council. The uh, wise people of Gabalva decided otherwise in 2017. Not that I have any grudges or anything. But I uh, don't know if this will make a huge impact in terms of whether Labour will lose their majority or not. I don't think so. I think that if you look at the uh, last couple of elections we've had in Cardiff since the 2017 council elections, it's been pretty much a solid climb up for Labour, all apart from that one terrible, disastrous one uh, in the European Parliament elections where Labour came fourth, but otherwise been very, very good for Cardiff. I can see them quite easily riding the crest of the Drakeford wave into a nice, solid majority in Cardiff next year. Uh, I mean, I don't think the Lib Dems will go forward, particularly in the city. Um, and I think the Conservatives won't be able to reach the high watermark that they had in 2017, where Labour were very, very unpopular in, in at that point in the May. Um, by the June, you know, the, in the Gubalba ward in which I stood in, in 2017 in the council elections, we did OK. We did better than we thought we were going to do. But if you look at the corresponding Labour vote share in that ward, five weeks later, it was like night and day. Labour won something like 70% of the vote in that ward. So I wouldn't be particularly worried if I were Labour from any other sort of electoral packs. I think they'll be quietly confident going into next year's election. Someone who doesn't live in the city, I think one of the questions I would have is that Labour look, as you as you say, Matt, they just look very, very strong and almost unchallenged in a way. You know, the, there's no easy path for any group or uh, coalition of parties to oust them from the leadership of the council. And I just wonder if this change, perhaps, in approach from Plaid and the Greens, which are obviously much smaller in terms of the number of council seats that they win in uh, Cardiff, do you think that there's a this is a healthy move for the city to 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 kind of try and nudge the needle a little bit or just kind of apply a little bit of pressure, even if it ultimately doesn't lead to losing the council. Do you think it's healthy for the city? I think that's the whole point of democracy, right? Accountability and and challenge and having your ideas challenged and having them scrutinised is important. I think that strong progressive parties are, you know, should should be there to challenge Labour. It doesn't mean I I think they should win. But I think it's certainly our democracy all in is benefited by people holding those in power to account. You know, having the the opposition there that can really put some scrutiny on some of the decisions. I I, I work with a number of Labour councillors on community activities where I am, and they're great. You're really impressed by what they do. But some of the kind of big ticket items which dominate the social media side of uh, Cardiff it is hard to see how we've delivered those and uh, you know I mentioned to you at a bus station earlier and how we're delivering the last piece of that piece of uh, redevelopment being the public sector aspect rather than the the private sector you know that's what we've got to start to be looking at that the public service the public good of these kind of council-led decisions have to be delivered first and not be the last bit of the jigsaw to be put in place and we're going to see that again at the moment with the the sports village the new indoor arena it's there's some big ticket things which i just don't think a lot of people are really happy and 
that's before we even mention student housing. I mean, look, as someone who stood in 2017 on a manifesto of, of getting the bus station done and stopping student housing being built, I think you know how I feel uh, about the uh, progress of the bus station. However, Kerry's broadly right, isn't he, really? I think that there are a lot of people, and we've had them on the pod, who are very annoyed at the level of student housing being built, the, the lack of progress in certain things that a Labour administration should be doing, or at least perceived to be doing. Uh, I, I'm broadly in agreement with Kerry. I think it's, it's important that there are parties there who, who are on the progressive left who can push Labour into, into acting with a bit more pace of change, perhaps. What's the direction of the city? What, you know, what, if you were to look at the city, I mean, the city's expanding hugely to the west and northwest with Place d'Our. Is the political trajectory of Cardiff firmly staying in the direction of Labour? Is that kind of majority centre-left kind of party? Um, or is it moving? Because Cardiff North has always kind of flitted back and forth between Conservative and Labour. Is there any kind of direction of movement in the city in terms of the electorate? I mean, you both know it much better than I do. I wouldn't think so, would you, Kerry? I think that, broadly speaking, I can't see uh, any world in which Labour aren't very much at least the largest party. Uh, and I do think that they're in such a better position than they were in the 2017 council elections. I think they'd be looking at an increased majority, given that also when you factor in that Cardiff Labour can't seem to win council by-elections for, for love nor money, um, but they do much, much better in the, in the once every five year election. Kerry, you agree? Yeah, Cardiff, Cardiff's currently a Labour city. As I said, the seats are there. I think they're, they're quite strong. What kind of media, social media outrage at some of the issues turns into actual votes? You know, we'll have to wait and see. You know, the last, the, the Senate election and the, the general election in Cardiff, it didn't really materialise in any meaningful way. But local elections, I think, are different. And I, I'd be interested to see the full range of candidates that go up and who they're up against and what the campaign is, what the, what the local issues are on the doorstep. I think it's going to be an interesting uh, election. Well, we shall see. Um, uh, two thirds of the pod is not standing this time around, I think. So uh, we, we, we'll have smiles on our face uh, and Kerry will have new shoes on his feet. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had a couple of questions there, didn't you, uh, Kerry? Uh, well, I, I knew a little bit about uh, what was going on here. Uh, I'll, I'll say I had some fingers in some pies to make some of this happen. But, you know, did you two, did, without me kind of, uh, you know, the whispers, did you two see anything like this coming? Well, yes, I think I saw something like this coming. I didn't think that it would be as successfully arranged and as professionally arranged in Cardiff um, as this has well ahead of the local election. I think a full credit to both parties and their uh, organisers locally for getting the agreement in place so soon and so apparently ready to then campaign on their platform. Um, if you look elsewhere, as I think you mentioned in the pod, the Unite to Remain uh, pact, um, which was, I think, a bit of a mixed bag uh, in uh, 2019, um, I think it showed when you actually get people in a room together that certainly with the Greens and Plaid that there is an awful lot of common ground. And I know that uh, there was at least one voice in Pontypridd that was curious to see if a similar thing could get off the ground here in Pontypridd. And um, I think also uh, you look at other parts of Wales where perhaps you could argue that individually both Plaid and the Greens have a, a very, very steep uphill task to make an impact electorally. You can see some advantages standing as a common platform rather than the kind of um, pact where somebody steps down in place for another party that happened in 2019. Would you say you're satisfied, Kerry? Is this the form and the manner in which you wanted to see this uh, come together? I think politics has got to change um, across the board. So this is a step in the right direction for me. And uh, I like to see consensual working together. But as you said, Rich, I think it has been really professionally done. I think the launch was good. It's been well received. And I think a lot of credit has got to go to the two we had on the pod tonight. I think, uh, you know, I think there was definite chemistry between the two of them there, work, being able to work together. I think that's something we need in Welsh politics. And 
you know, you don't want to talk about what's gone on in the past, but, you know, there'd been some notoriously difficult characters in Cardiff to get on with in the past. And, uh, you know, that's going to be something we may want to pick up in future pods on local elections, how that might fare in Cardiff. <laughs> I don't want to get sued. Um, that, <laughs> but, no, I don't disagree with you. But this is incredibly uh, well, it's like Welsh squish, isn't it? It's very professional. And I think that doing it this far in advance of the council elections is an incredibly clever move. If you did this, you've got to do it now, because if you do it any later than now, you start to get lost into the whole Christmas, no one really pays any attention to news thing, then you're in the new year, and that's not really enough time to sort of sell that message to people. I think the one thing they've got to do really quickly is pick candidates, get them in, prioritise that if they want to win, they've got to prioritise their seats, pick where they think they're going to win, where they have the best chance to win, get the candidates in now and do the work on the ground. That's what they have to do. Where, where did you stand again, Matt? Just to... Gabalva. Oh, we're we're going to focus resources on Gabalva. Well, I'm not standing there again, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, you... I, I, I think Gabalva is the, the seat for the current Lib Dem leader. Is that right? That is indeed correct. That is indeed correct. Yeah. Um, but no, I think we have much to look forward to next year. Again, going straight back into covering another set of elections. If anyone listening has any ideas for what we could cover, if whether that's particular parties, particular uh, areas of uh, responsibility covered by local government, or even uh, particular local authorities, which they think will be interesting contests, please get in touch, email us at hereatblogcomery at gmail.com or send us a DM on the Twitter account. But as always, if you've enjoyed what you've heard this evening, please do not forget to find us on Medium at Hereat Blog Cymru, on Facebook at Hereat Blog Cymru, and on Twitter at Hereat Blog. And if you want to hear from Kerry, you can find him at... Well, you can find me at Kerry the Viking, but your host in Slip tonight, you didn't ask Reese or Anthony how to contact them, did you? Well... <laughs> I, that will fundamentally depend on lots of factors, but usually with politicians, I don't, if you notice, if you go back through all our, all our episodes, professional politicians, I tend to drop the handles. Uh, Richard Martin, how can people find you on Twitter? Uh, I'm obviously not a professional politician. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a compliment. Uh, that's fair enough, yeah. Uh, at Mimosa Cymru on Twitter. Wonderful. And you can find me at Hexter101, H-E-X-T-E-R-101, Hovar. Thank you for listening to Hereith. If you like what you heard, please don't forget to subscribe, rate and review.